Welcome, welcome to One Minute Crypto. I'm your host, Kronos, and today I want to talk about why I like unbounded inflation in a cryptocurrency. As you probably know, the most number of Bitcoins that will ever exist is 21 million. But not every crypto works that way. Some cryptos just keep on growing in supply and they never hit a limit. For example, Dogecoin is creating 5 billion new coins every year and that's not going down. Grin, a new crypto that just came out, is creating a new token every second. Once again, that doesn't decrease over time. So it's basically unlimited supply. In this video, I want to talk about why I actually like that. Now, I know this is a controversial topic, so if you disagree, post your arguments below the video because I do want to hear what you think. Today's episode is sponsored by America's Card Room, the most trusted U.S. online poker site. Fund your account and claim your winnings using any of over 60 different cryptocurrencies. So if you love poker, check them out. That's America's Card Room. So the reason that I like unbounded inflation is that it is not infinite inflation. Take Dogecoin, for example. That 5 billion new coins every year represents about a 5% inflation rate of the currency. So the number of tokens increases every year by about 5%. And that decreases as the total supply grows. So it's not actually unreasonable from a monetary policy perspective to run an inflation rate over time. People see unbounded as infinite sometimes, saying these tokens have no value because there's unlimited of them. Well, no, infinite would mean like if you want to create more, you could just create more instantly. You know what I mean? They're coming out at a specific rate that is still limited by the protocol. The second reason that I like unbounded inflation is that it's resilient in its security. If you think about the way that Bitcoin security works today, it's based on the fact that when you mine a block, you get a reward. Miners create new Bitcoins as they mine blocks. Now, the theory is that as that block reward goes down, fees will go up to replace it. But that's actually not too clear how that's going to work out. So it's actually a big test to say, can Bitcoin block reward go down to zero and the blockchain still stay stable? So I I say unbounded is resilient because you're using that same security mechanism that's been proven through Bitcoin already. You're not shifting to something that's supported by fees. Instead, you're supported by a block reward, which we've already seen works. If you're interested in the technical details of why Bitcoin might get unstable when it's just running on fees, check out the video that I put out called Bitcoin Security After We Are All Dead, because it actually goes into an interesting research paper that talks about that. So the third reason I like unbounded supply growth is that it's not actually inflationary in the very long run. Take Grin, for example. After the first year, the supply of tokens is X. After the second year, it's doubled because you've been creating them for twice as long. So that's a 100% inflation rate. Sounds ridiculous, right? But now let's look at after 10 years. Well, now the 11th year created a 10% inflation rate. And after 100 years, your inflation rate is just 1%. So you can see that trending down towards zero. Now, it doesn't actually hit zero, but it can actually affect effectively hit zero because people are losing their coins over time. I mean, we've all heard the famous cases where people threw away their hard drives and lost their Bitcoins. It's going to be inevitable that some people lose their cryptocurrency. And when the rate of losses is equal to that rate of new coins being produced, then we reach an equilibrium. So actually, it's not inflationary in the very long run to have unbounded supply. So those are a couple reasons that I like this setup, but I know there's a lot of argument around this. So I want to hear what you think of all this. Post your comments below the video. I'm Kronos. Thanks for watching.